What if I told you the government hid something from us this entire time during BTV6's release? Yeah, I know, shocking that our governments would lie to us, but there never was 132 achievements in BTV6. It actually never exists. The rewards hidden in a vault way down below the surface. There's 12 secret hidden achievements the government tried to keep away from us, the general public, but I went searching into the deepest depths to find them. I'm JungleMonkey7, and this is the Hidden Achievements of BTD6. This first achievement is easier than your mom on a Friday night at the bar. Big Bloons requires you to win 10 games as Pat Fusty. Doesn't matter the medal, doesn't matter the strat, just win 10 games as my boy Fusty. Our next achievement, Golden Ticket, is also very easy. We're just going to play a little doodad on the map, Candy Falls. We're going to start out in the top right corner. Hit the door, hit the waterfall, left trees, bottom right little post, bottom right trees, the spinning wheel, and then the bottom left trees. So let's enhance the audio and watch carefully. Just follow my lead. What a beautiful little tune. Our third challenge is just like Donkey's video game publisher, Big Mode. We're going to be playing the game on medium or harder with our favorite big towers. So we're going to use the helicopter, the plane, the mortar, super monkey, banana farm, buccaneer, village, and spike factory are the only towers we could use. But our heroes are also following the same rules, so we can only use Pat Fusty in Churchill. And yeah, just win 10 games on medium difficulty or higher medals, and you'll be set for this achievement. The fourth achievement is also pretty easy, unless if you enjoy your free time. We're going to be doing an Odyssey without a hero, which means the best way to do this is just boot up an Odyssey, put it on easy, just go with like that default loadout, bring in whoever you want, and just play the Odyssey without a hero. Easy as that. But yeah, I mean, if you just watch a YouTube guide, they usually have this as like a default thing, so if you just watch like Phoenix or Pungy or even me, I'm sure they have it. So yeah, it should be easy. Our fifth challenge is a bit of a grinder because you have to play a hundred wins on maps that have an obstacle but you don't remove that obstacle. Now luckily you can just grind this out on easy mode but I recommend you just let passive income do its work. Just play the game, have your fun, and then a couple of weeks later you'll get this achievement once you beat like a hundred maps because who even removes the obstacles? If you remove obstacles, you're cringe. There, I said it. All my homies keep the obstacles right where they are. In the sixth challenge, we need 25,000 critical hits. So when you're doing your gameplay, just add in these five towers and you should get it just passively. So use the tier four and tier five bottom path dart monkey and use the tier three, four, and five super monkeys in your games. And this should come with time. I mean, middle path super monkey is probably the fastest way to do it though. Just a little tip. The seventh achievement is when things get a little dicey. If the previous six achievements were Weenie Hut Juniors, this would be Weenie Hut without the Junior. So first of all, we're going to need the Monkey Knowledge. There can only be one, which is located in the Magic section. If you do have that Monkey Knowledge, then we're ready to go. I'm just going to do Monkey Meadows on Easy Standard, and it's important that we use Adora. Adora is the main focus of this challenge. We're just going to start off with a Dart Monkey down that main lane. We're just going to save up for a farm. We're just going to farm at the bottom of the map. So, hopefully you can save up for a farm. Place it where I'm put it, right there. Perfect. And then once we get our farm to a 220, I mean a 200, uh, we're going to start saving up for a Dora. We're going to place her right to the left of the Dora Monkey underneath the track. And then we're going to start placing farms in an L shape, which is a Death Note reference. Oh my god, I love his feet. And we're going to put another three two 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 zero zero farms. And then we're going to get a discount village. And then we're going to get a little 022 sniper down the line there and replace our dart monkey. And we're going to save up for another discount village right next to it to the right and then we're gonna start building 
our little empire. We're just gonna do a quick little setup to make as much money as we can. So place our fifth 200 farm right on top of it. And then we're just gonna chill, relax. Let's try to find the spot with the farm, but I think just go to the bottom. Yeah, bottom will work. Get that to a 200, then directly right of it, get another 200, and then just to the upper right of the one we just placed, get another, another 2000. And then we're set. Buy semi-auto fire on your sniper and then start upgrading all your farms except for one into plantations. And then once you do that, you can get full out of sniper before around 40 and start upgrading that last farm into a plantation. And then we're just going to go to free play. This is going to all be done in free play. It's totally legit. You don't have to, you know, do this on impoppable or anything. So we're just going to do easy free play. And once we got three BRFs, we're going to save up for an elite sniper. But yeah, we should be begin building our BRFs. And then we're going to get Monkey City along with all the other farms into BRFs. And once we get all the other farms into BRFs with the Monkey City, Monkey City is going to allow us to add one more farm to the right. And we're going to make that one a BRF. And then we're just going to add some camo lead detection. I was a little slow on this, but I'm giving you the heads up so you can be faster than me. Just place down an 032 wizard to the left of Adora. I mean, you can do an 022 wizard, but he's going to be useful for our next step, which is going to be our temple sacrifices. But first, we're going to upgrade to a banana central. And once we get the banana central, save up till round 74, get your sun avatar in the middle there, and then we're going to surround it with uh, three of the four monkey types with 50k plus sacrifices. So I used a mad, uh, a 400 spike along with the 005 engineer, and then the wizard lord phoenix we had for defense. And that's all 50k plus, and we're gonna get our max temple. Then we're gonna place that Wizard Lord Phoenix and just get back into defense and saving up. And while you're saving up, we're gonna need 50k sacrifices of all the categories. So we got the Ray of Doom as a sacrifice, we added the the fifth tier top hat druid to help with the magic category. We got the super mines, the top path. Tier 5 for the spike factory to help out. We got Bloon Crush and the bottom path tier 5 boomer, boomer to get the primary. And that fills out all of our monkey type 50k plus sacrifices. But we also need both tier 5 super monkeys out of the range of the temple to get the achievement here. But, and lastly, the reason this achievement is called Strangely Adorable is because we're sacrificing a level 20 Adora to the temple as well. So make sure she's level 20 at this point. We should have enough money in around like early round 100. So we're gonna get like a Vengeful Adora if you want to use her in future runs. This is how you get Vengeful Adora. But if you don't have this achievement already, this is how you're gonna get the no, strangely adorable and then bam if it worked it should look like this everything your sun god turns to black it's gonna be eventual true sun god now and then we're just gonna add a bonus achievement for our special vengeful adora so you know take a good look at her we're gonna play this round and we're gonna sell her and we're gonna replace her with a regular adora because there is another achievement in the game where you have to uh get seven levels with one sacrifice so we're gonna upgrade her to level seven to get the blood sacrifice and we're gonna upgrade her even more than several le seven levels by doing this achievement in the most badass way we're just gonna sacrifice a vtsg and she's gonna be max level the eighth achievement all you need to do is be an expert map on chimps with a tier five spike factory this one's a little hard and i don't want to do a full chimps guide so i just linked a video with a great strategy i'm gonna you know, put it in the description, put it on the screen now. Just watch this as a super easy guide. And I'll just show you the start here, just to give you some pointers. So you're going to put that Dar Monkey as close to the drawbridge of the water as you can. And then just put that sub as close to the drawbridge as you can. And it's a little bit of RNG, so you should hit subscribe. Scientists say if you hit subscribe to Juggle Monkey 7, you should get that first try every time. So yeah, just implement that in your run. Alchemist and Blutical Boy, challenge number 9 sounds a bit intense because we're going to need 900,000 pops on our Bloom Master Alchemist before round 100, but this log strat I developed is actually really easy. We're going to get all those pops before round 95 just to be safe. And it all starts with the Star Monkey on this square, placing a little bit lower, and we're just going to save up for Ben. 
And then once we give Ben, we're gonna save up for a 200 farm. And for this run, you can place the farms anywhere on the map. Don't even worry about placements. Don't worry about villages. This is gonna be an easy one. It's just gonna be a little long, but that's okay. So we got our first 200 farm in our Benjamin. Now, I'm going to save up for crossbow, and the reason I do this is because look how long you have to wait for a red balloon to leak all the way through this track. So I got a little impatient, and I'm just going to buy a crossbow right away. And after we get the crossbow, we're just going to start farming until we have seven 200 farms. And once we get seven 200 farms, we can start going for some marketplaces. And the goal is to get seven 200 farms and then make two of those into marketplaces. And then bam. Once you got two of those into marketplaces, we're going to get a uh, lead to gold alchemist, a uh, 103 alchemist on strong. Make sure to set it on strong for the entire run. And that's going to be before round 28. And then we're going to upgrade everything to marketplaces. And then we're going to save up until round 38. So make sure on round 37. Just turn off your auto start, just just turn it off. And then on round 38, you can sell your dart monkey. So just watch here. We're gonna sell our dart monkey and we're gonna convert to gold and then that rubber gold into a blue master alchemist. All we, all we had to do was sell two farms, so that's not too bad. And then we're gonna set up a wizard. That'll be useful later, but first we're just gonna make sure our Blue Master Alchemist can see the camo. So we're gonna place the village just to the right of it, and our Blue Master Alchemist is just gonna be on that, like, uh, if it's, we're playing tic tac toe, it's the bottom left square is the best place to put it. We're just gonna get a wall of fire, and then we're gonna save up here. And, uh, yeah, just play up free play. It's just like strangely adorable. We don't have to play on a pop but we can do an easy free play. And then we're just gonna get an 032 wizard, get the dragon's breath. Then we're gonna get jungles dr jungle drums along with the dragon's breath. And then I think we can start farming again. We should be set here. And then we're just gonna spam a bunch of 023 farms. That's what we're going to do best, so make sure you spam 023 farms, this will give us the most money, the most amount easy, easiest for mobile, but once you get a good amount on like round late 40s, just get a 420 alchemist on that dragon's breath, just make sure it's looking nice and strong, and keep spamming your farms while they do this, any second we're not upgrading something on like around, just spam 023 farms across the map. But around 50 dive, we're just gonna get a ring of fire. And then around 51, we're gonna get the overdrive. So 420 ring of fire, 204 overdrive, and then place down another 420 elk. And the defense is all gonna be in that bottom right square if we're thinking tic tac toe. And then since we have a bunch of money and a bunch of farms, we're just gonna get MIB. And for our blue master rock this, about before our BFD, we're gonna get an overclock. And we're just going to be constantly overclocking the BMA, so just make sure you're constantly uh, overclocking the Blue Master Alchemist, and life will treat you right. It's not really a necessity to always overclock it, but you know, make sure, make sure you try your best during high Moab rounds. And then we're going to save up for a Homeland Defense, get the Homeland Defense, get Attack Zone, should be around like before 75. And round 75, you're going to want to have that MIB next to your defensive towers on the right. And you can also add a call to arms near your BMA if you'd like. And then we're just going to get overclock and continuously overclock our BMA. And then we're going to get a super mines next to our defense towers on the way to round, you know, the 90s. And we're just going to keep overclocking that BMA. And by round 95, we're just going to turn off auto start. And when round 95 ends, we're just going to look to see how many pops our BMA has, and it should have over 900,000. So let's check. Use call to arms here, clean up all these DBTs. That should add a bunch of pops, and then we end up with a million and 90,000, which is way over the achievement limit. So we're just going to head home because the achievement says we should get it before round 100, so we should check before round 100, and then bam. We should have the Alchemist and Bluticle Boy achievement right there, and if you didn't get 900,000 pops, just play a few more rounds, then check the home screen. 
Achievement 10 is infamous, and you've already probably seen on YouTube a ton, so I'm really glad Ninja Kiwi decided to add this as a hidden achievement. This is called 2TC, which means you just have to beat a chimp's medal with uh, two towers. So I'm just going to link this Ethan Reed video because he's a goaded YouTuber. So you're just going to play on Resort, and the two towers you're going to be seeing in this video is uh, an 025 wizard, which is going to be the Prince of Darkness right on the tippy top of that square so the wall of fire goes directly above him and then you're also going to be doing a 250 uh dartling gunner and this whoops i accidentally used uh, accelerator but you're gonna have a 250 dartling gunner and you're just going to shoot straight down the straight path the 11th achievement perfect paragon is probably the hardest technically since the information to get a degree 100 paragon is not easily accessible and I don't think it's even in the game at all so luckily you have a turbo nerd like me to explain how to do it since I've had to do it recently in late game runs and so basically we're going to start with the Dart Monkey and Geraldo on the left and right hand sides of that little hourglass area on Cubism. We're picking Cubism because it's such an easy map and it's just going to be good for sorting out all the requirements because there is a lot of requirements to get a degree 100 paragon. So we're just going to save up for the NFT first. We get down round 5 and it's going to shoot up and value later and help us. And then after that on round 10 get your first 200 farm. And then after getting that 200 farm right there get another. And then place a shooty turret at the straightaway there and put it on last. That'll help us with pops, and then we're going to get three more two zero zeros, and then we're going to put an alchemist down, uh, just to help with the round 28 and 30. We're going to put it right on that left spot, right in the middle there, on that bottom part of the hourglass, and that should pop all the leads, and we're just going to get back to farming after that. Oh yeah, and you're also going to get a crossbow. I think I forgot to mention that, but just get a crossbow. It's just a sort of a general guide. It doesn't really matter until, you know, we have to start placing down our planes and our uh, paragon totems. So I'm just going to put down a discount village on the right triangle there and get four plantations before we place down the plane. It's going to be our most important plane. So remember not to sell any of the planes. And we're just going to get never miss darts with uh, faster shooting and lots more darts. And then we're just going to get even more plantations. Get our first BRF, and we're just gonna start farming even more and more BRFs. You don't have to follow my farming guide, but this is just gonna be the quickest way to get a perfect paragon. It takes a while, but once you have a BRF, I feel comfortable getting uh, jungle drums with the camo detection to help out our plane, since we're gonna want to get it a bunch of pops. And I'm just gonna sell my Dark Monkey so it doesn't steal pops away from my plane. I'm going to start elk buffing the plane as well for a 4-2-0, and you should just keep trudging along, get your BRFs. Once you reach 6 BRFs, get your village to a monkey city, and then get even more BRFs so I can fit inside. I recommend getting an 8 farm BRF, just like the one I'm doing right now. After getting those 8 BRFs, you're going to want to buy the Spectre right around around 59-ish. You know, just before the BFB comes, buy a Spectre. And then we're going to save up for Banana Central, which we should get on round 63. Once we have the Banana Central, we should get an overclock by round 67, and we're just going to overclock the farm. And then once the farm's at 10 stacks, you start overclocking the Flying Fortress slash Spectre. Now we're going to start upgrading Geraldo, because this is where the boring part slash the important part is going to begin. So let's sell the Quincy NFT and get Geraldo to level 20. Now place down both of his Paragon Totems. I really recommend him uh, placing them in groups of five because we're going to be placing one of these each round. So remember, each round place down a Paragon Totem and you're going to want to place down 45 of these. So nine groups of five. Now you should have, before round 80 the ZMG, you should have a Flying Fortress and a Perma Brew. And then on top of that, we're going to also add an home, uh, a Homeland Defense and you know, a Top Path Plane because we're going to all tier 5s for this paragon. And I'm just going to place a village right next to this perma brew so I can reach that top plane and we're just going to make it a, you know, a 502. Once we have that going, we're just going to keep going in the round 98. We're going to get the other 5th tier. I put out Wing Monkey, you don't have to. And I put the other one on called Arms. And again, every round just keep placing those paragon totems. And now that I have 95 here, I'm going to start looking at my checklist. So I'm going to sell all my farms, 
And now we're going to have to do 17 sacrifices to get the full Paragon. So I'm going to place 7 on the top part of this map. And then I'm going to place 10 on kind of the right side of this map. And that should be 17. Now what we're trying to fulfill here is the 17 t fully upgraded tier 4 requirement. And we're also trying to fill the requirement of $250,000 in tier 4 sacrifices. So we're going to knock both of these down by just sacrificing a bunch of 240 planes. And then once we sacrifice the 17 240 planes along with our 45 Paragon totems, we're going to aim for the 16.2 million pops next. So now that we have all the three tier 5s, 70 fully upgraded tier 4s, or, you know, tier 4s with a cross path fully upgraded or 240s, we're going to spend 250k plus on those tier 4s, 45 Geraldo Paragam totems. We just need 16.2 million pops, and you should get that in the... 130s so i'm just gonna play out these 130s and i'm gonna start turning off autoplay and i'm just gonna watch my flying fortress do all the work since it's obviously our strongest one and then just to be safe oh perfect we got almost 70 million pops we're ready to go we're gonna hit the you know build paragon or whatever and it should be a degree 100 since we did all the steps right and congrats you just did one of the hardest achievements and now you know how to get a degree 100 for your late game runs we've reached the final challenge which is super hard since you need to have friends the worst challenge any bt6 player could face no but if you know seriously get a co-op game together maybe it's with some randoms maybe it's with that friend that you definitely have all you need to do is get 2.5 million together send it all to one player that one player sends it all to another player and basically you just need to send 500k in one single button send so just keep sending the money around to each other and you should all get the achievement and bam that's all the hidden achievements you now know way too much. You've uncovered the world's greatest secrets with the BTD6 hidden achievements. The Blue Helmets will be knocking on your doors any minute now as the world governments from the United Nations have flagged your computer. So sit back, relax, get a deadly precision sniper rifle, make sure to fend off against the elite because you discovered the hidden secrets that the government did not want you to know about. As usual, have a good night everyone. Sleep tight and peace.